Shalom, Shalom. Dash, peace and salutations to the Israelites out here teaching and spreading this truth and risking their lives to make sure this word, to make sure this truth get out. Anyway, um, this um, video here of the leader of the uh, false state of Israel, I posted a screenshot, like this screenshot you're seeing here, this, this of the video um, the other day. I don't know, nevertheless, but anyway, I'm going to break it down a little bit, right? So a lot of people like uh, Sean King, if you will, because that's one of the viral accounts out here. By the way, he's Amalek too. He's an Edomite. He, he, he's not Hebrew. He's not a, a nigga, as we say. He's not. He's fooling y'all. He's taking y'all for y'all money, but that's another topic. He's an Edomite. His father's an Edomite. His grandfather's an Edomite. All right, anyway. Um, and people are, are sharing this, even so-called Christians. Look, he's saying he's using the Bible to say that he could commit genocide and blah, 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 blah. But remember, y'all called them the Jews, right? Understand this, so I'm going to dive into it and break it down. This is a prophecy the Most High, and I, well, I'm sorry, a commandment the Most High gave the Israelites. This is still an open commandment. That's what y'all don't understand who don't research and study. This prophecy is going to be fulfilled by the Israelites in the kingdom of heaven. There's going to be bloodshed in the kingdom of heaven. This is going to be fulfilled. People forget that. So this is how you know it ain't you know, Christians and this, and I'm a believer. So if you're a believer in Christ in the kingdom of heaven, if you say that every, anyone who believes is now Israelite, then in the kingdom of heaven, you're going to shed blood. But it's going to be to Amalek because they put the Israelites in captivity and, and a million other reasons. They ain't put no Christians in captivity. They ain't put them in slavery for 400 years and and hang and burn their children and all that. They didn't do all that. It's not about religion. The Most High deals with bloodlines and heritage. He deals with nations of people. He don't deal with religions. Man created all religions, right? So I'm going to get into the scriptures and show this is an open commandment. So they're saying, uh, uh, the fake Jews, that look, we're back in Israel. So we're the Israelites. So quote unquote, they're back in heaven, they're back in their land, because that prophecy states when the true biblical Israelites get back in their land, them with Christ and the angels are going to destroy all of Amalek. It don't say with the U.S. military and the French and the British military and with bombs and guns and nukes and AR-15s. I haven't seen that dome crack open yet. I ain't seen Hamasi, I ain't seen Yahweh come down. I ain't seen no angels. I ain't seen no chariots. That's how you know most people don't have a clue with what's really going on in the world. All right? So let matter of fact, let's get into that. What is that? Uh uh first Samuel 3. We're gonna we, let's get right to it, right? Because once we understand the scriptures, we we don't run from it. We go straight to exactly what they're talking about. Let me highlight it. Right. This is the commandment that the Most High gave to the Israelites, our forefathers, the Hebrew people. Right. Verse three. First Samuel 15, three. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not. But slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox, sheep, camel and ass. Everything they got, their cat, iguana, their children, they just had a newborn. The Most High said, I do not care. Slaughter them all. Now, our forefathers did not do that. So this commandment is still open, right? You run into a few coons every now and then, right? So it's going to be fulfilled in the kingdom of heaven. And we're going to get to that. Well, Christ and everybody uh, uh, prophesies it. Hamasiach and everybody prophesies it, right? Go down to verse... Um, Nine, right? But Saul and the people spared Agag, right? So Agag is like the king of the Amalekites, et cetera, et cetera. They all Edomites, right? So he didn't kill everything. He kept the best of the sheep, the oxen, the fatlings, the lambs, and all that was good and would not utterly destroy them. Like it's going to be a, a few of the, the, the coon church. They ain't going to want to fulfill the commandments that Yahweh Shah going to give. Kingdom heaven, they're going to be like how people think. Right. 
We ain't gonna be sitting around uh, drinking Star Refuse, they destroyed utterly, right? Now, th that's what he's quoting, right? But keep in mind, especially I'm talking to my people here in, 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 in America and scattered, so-called Negroes, if you will, right? This commandment is open. It's open. It ain't happened yet. Let's get there in Ezekiel. Get some precepts and see if we can get out of here. Ezekiel 25, I believe verse 14. Right, I'm going to just jump straight to it. Y'all can kind of read the rest through on your own, right? See, right there. I like this because it says Edom. So this concerning Edom. We've never had these people in captivity and we've never destroyed them all. Verse 14. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom. That's Amalek. Amalek is Edom. By the hand of my people Israel. By you Hebrews out there. Our forefathers worked hard like Hebrew slaves because they were the Hebrew slaves. It's common sense. And they shall do in Edom according to my anger and according to my fury. And they shall know my vengeance, said Yahweh. This ain't happened yet. These are future prophecies. Okay? This going to happen in the kingdom of heaven. Now let's stay in the book of uh, in the Old Testament, if you will. We're going to go to Numbers 24 and 20. I'm just hitting the key points. Y'all can read through this on your own. Right? Actually, I'll do 18. Numbers 24 and 18. And Edom, that's Amalek, right, shall be a possession. Seir also shall be a possession for his enemies and Israel, the Hebrews, shall do valiantly. Out of Jacob, talking about Yahweh shall, shall come he that shall have dominion. This is the exact same thing that Daniel saw when he saw the Son of Man, when he saw Yahweh shall. He said his kingdom is going to be an everlasting kingdom. It's never going to uh, cease to rule, if you will, right? And shall destroy him that remaineth in the city. And when he looked on Amalek, this going to be in the kingdom of heaven. He took up this parable. Even though this is in the book of Numbers, it's a parable. Meaning, I could say this right now, but it's going to mean multiple things for multiple different generations. It has to be a parable because Amalek would have a perpetual hatred toward the Hebrew people. That's why you could just walk into the store now or go into, I don't know, Cheesecake Factory, since that's circulating, and try to order food and they look at you crazy. It's spiritual. It's in their spirit. It's in their bloodline. They have a perpetual hatred towards you. Even if you sleep with some of these dogs, separate from them, try to divorce them or do anything like that, they're going to try to utterly destroy you. They don't have an ounce of what it says, mercy or kindness in their body. They don't love you. They lust you. All right. And I, uh, verse 20, and when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable and said, Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end, the end times, shall be that he perish forever. How? In the kingdom of heaven by the Israelites. Some of them are going to be destroyed in these wars, like I've covered before, but some of them are going to come with us in chains into the kingdom of heaven for a thousand years. And after that, Yahweh the Lord, going to get that commandment and say, hey, it's their time. Bind them all up, burn them all up, cast them away, and the angels are going to go do their job. Right? And how you know this, uh, I'll, I'll just kind of bounce through. We got Isaiah chapter 14, verse 1. And Yahweh will have mercy upon Jacob, the Israelites, and will yet choose Israel, the Israelites. Right? And set them in their own land. We haven't got placed in our land yet. The Lord Yahweh shall going to be with us when we go back to Israel. That's how you know they're not the Israelites. And the stranger shall be joined with them and shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them. So the Israelites, the Hebrew people going to take them and bring them to their place. Right? Because in my father's house, there are many mansions. And the house of Israel, the Israelites shall possess the slavery. Them in the land of Yahweh for servants and handmaids. They're going to be slaves. They're not going to just be wiping up our kitchen counters with Clorox wipes and shit. 
and they shall take them captives whose captives they were. Christians ain't never been captives for over 400 years in Babylon. They got churches on every single block. This is not talking about religions. It's talking about us, his people, right? And we shall rule over our oppressors. And it shall come to pass in that day that Yahweh shall give thee, the Hebrews, rest from thy sorrow, from our fear, and from the hard bondage, the hard slavery, wherein we were made to serve. They made us serve them. If you didn't get out there and pick that cotton, what happened to your, your grandma? What happened to your granddad? Okay. That ain't happened to Christians. That ain't happened to the Catholics, the Buddhists, the Pentecostals, Baptists. Does it make sense? Let's go down to Isaiah 14, verse 19, right? This is going to be in the kingdom of heaven, right? Now he's talking about uh, Amalek. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch. This is how you know there's no such thing as grafting in. You can't graft into a bloodline. I can't wake up tomorrow and say, you know what? Because I believe in Buddha, I'm now part of the Ming Dynasty. And I go over to China and they all welcome me in and say, you're Chinese now. You're Chinese. You're Chinese. No. This is our heritage, our bloodline. The most I let them know they're an abominable branch. You can't take a dead branch from a rotten tree and put it on a, a fresh apple tree and expect for it to just mingle in and do. Don't they say uh, one bad apple spoils the bunch? When you go to the grocery store and you pick out your fruit and one of the fruit is just molded and green, you don't say, well, it's fine. I'm going to just take that one out and get the rest. No, you throw away the whole thing. This way, how about Shimmy how shall saying? But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch, and as the raiment of those that are slain, because some of them gonna be killed in these wars. So they're gonna be the, the few that are left that's coming into the kingdom of heaven and change with us. Thrust through with the sword that go down to the stones of the pit as a carcass trodden under feet. After a thousand years of our rulership, they're gonna be cast out, they're gonna cease to exist. Amalek, like you just read in Numbers, they're going to cease to exist. We're going to destroy all, like the scriptures say, they are cancer to the earth. They poison our foods. Look what they do with our schools, our homes. They're cancer to the earth. They made all y'all take that jab because y'all ain't got faith in Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah. They got to go. They got to go. This is what he's saying, okay? Matter of fact, let's, let's, let's get another one. Let's go to second Ezra. Chapter 12, right? Now, this is what he's talking about. Amalek and Esau, Edom, they're known for their eagle. They put it all in their flags. The Spaniards, the French, German, all of them. They're all the same. They're all Amalek. They're the same bird, different wings, right? Verse 1. And it came to pass, whilst the lions spake these words unto the eagle, I saw. So he's talking about the Israelites, the lions, the tribe of Judah, the Hebrews, right? And behold, the head that remained and the four wings appear no more. They're going to cease to exist. And the two went into it and set themselves up to reign. And their kingdom was small and, and a fill of uproar, right? And I saw and behold, there appeared no more. The whole body of the eagle, they the same bird, just different wings. I Meaning there ain't going to be no Edomites left. So when I say planet of the apes, it's because the scriptures say so. It's going to be other nations, but Amalek, Esau, man, they got out of here. They got to go, right? They appeared no more. The whole body of the eagle was burnt so that the earth was in great fear. Then awakened, then awakened out of the trouble and tranced my mind and from great fear and said unto my spirit. Now, if y'all want to read that later, it goes into the context of what he was seeing. All the Edomites going to be burnt up. So when we call them walking charcoal, it's because the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah said so. All right? So keep it, keep that in mind that even um uh, you know with that post that we saw, that's what he was saying. So a lot of people saying, This hey, this hey, he wanna kill everybody. The Lord gonna make the Israelites do that. I will make them which are the synagogue of Satan, Amalek, which say they are Jews, Amalek, and are not, but do lie. I will make them come worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. I loved you. Your black ass. 
So with that, Shalom.